cars on school property. At the council meeting on October 27, 2014, Theodora Scarado petitioned the council to oppose the placement of cell phone towers on Prince George's County Public Schools property. In 2011, the Prince George's County Public Schools entered into an agreement to lease property to Milestone Communications for the possible location of cell phone towers. According to news reports, over 70 schools have been identified as potential sites, including Eleanor Roosevelt High School, Greenbelt Middle School, Turning Point Academy. Included in Council's packet are a number of articles related to this topic, including when parents opposed to the use of school property appeared before the school board at an information, also there's an information piece on cell phone towers from Anne Arundel County Schools as well as information from an Anne Arundel County parents group opposed to cell phone towers on school property. And finally, an article on the FCC's view on cell phone towers. According to this information, uh, this is city manager's interpretation, there is not conclusive proof that cell phone tower locations on school property are dangerous. However, there clearly are parental and group concerns, including the Prince George's County chapter of the NAACP, which has gone on record opposing the placement of cell phone towers on school property. So staff is, council, is actually looking for direction from council on what to do about this issue. And uh, once again, I would like to note that back in 2011, I actually raised this issue on the milestone communication sites. And uh, we staff looked into it and uh, came back the milestone communication sites, those over 70 sites or potential sites, they're not, at the time, they were not actually active sites. There was more a generic sort of agreement. And in the background uh, information, there's actually a description by the school system on how this process is incremental. First, these I sites were identified. And in order to, to go forward, the school board would have to check in. There would have to be hearings. Is, is that correct, Mr. McLaughlin? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Ms. Garrado seems to just... I, I just want to say there there are no... the Well, what I, what I was going to talk about is, like, there are several cell towers, several schools getting cell towers. There is a process. There's a very complicated and long process. Right. But the community, there are no hearings. There is no, there are no, there's no special exception hearing allowed at this time. There is a community meeting that happens after they've decided on the location, after they've gone through a whole bunch of the process, they then have a community meeting. But what I was told is they can note, there was a, there was a civic association against the Charles Flowers uh, cell tower, for example. That was noted, but it did not stop it because there's... School board. Yes. No, it wasn't no, the school board. It was no, I'm talking, the school board already okayed it in 2010. They do not. They may hear about what's happening, but there's no next vote. There's no, okay, we're, you know, Roosevelt's going to get a tower, have the school board vote on it. That's not what's happening. Instead, it moves through this other process, mandated by law, right. a lot of it. Um, and, it, for example, at Charles Flowers, the PTA found out after the lease was signed that the tower was going up. So what I've found, because um, I've gotten involved in this, is people don't know that there's a tower. Even when it's in development and there's a light, there's even permit. There's a permit going down and the community doesn't know and parents at the school don't know. And I don't want to spend, I could talk for hours about it, but there's not a special exception process. And that's what I've raised with them is it should be special exception process because it is residentially zoned and it's a commercial business that's going to have more than four visits a year by maintenance. So you brought this up with the school board? I have. I most recently last week went and asked the school board to bring the policy back to review it because in 2010 when they voted on it and there was no public comment, it was a 42nd vote, um, they didn't even have a leasing agreement for the community to look at. So I think that's a lack of transparency. I think that we should be able to look at the agreement. In fact, what happened was they voted... So you asked Dr. Maxwell to go back and take a new... Because this agreement with Milestone is something that happened with the past administration. Right? 2011. 2011. Well, 2010, but then 2011 the lease was, was the signed. the agreement was approved. 
The lease, the master lease agreement was approved in 2011. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was um, passed by the school board in 2010 with a vote. Okay. And then interestingly, in 2011, the lease was signed, but there wasn't, it didn't come back to the, to the community. Um, I could write up a whole list of everything well, that, that happened. That's if a you, procurement you know, or internal to, process that goes through giving them permission to build the tower, permitting it, and then by location identification and, and, and all that and doing a public notification, which they probably did not do. It, or when they but do it, people what? throw it let away. Me, let me yeah. just turn this around here a little bit here. This is something that we in Greenbelt have always opposed. And, Mr. McLaughlin, I'm sure you're well aware that there was an quote, opportunity by the Greenbelt Volunteer Fire Department to get such a lease, too, on our city facility, and that was quickly turned down. Oh. You may not have known about that. And oh. we do not like cell towers in Greenbelt, particularly on school sites. This has been, oh, we've had a lot of opportunities to uh, put them on public lands. They've come forward, but never actually got even before council meeting because it was basically killed before it even got to the door to city manager. And if I remember correctly, looking at that uh, 2010 or 2011 uh, milestone piece, th there was actually a proposal to put another tower over in Greenway Center, but that was on private land. So uh, just in terms of what, what we can do, what we can control, what we can actually do, we can we can broach this with our new school board uh, member and talk with her about and it because certainly is, we would like notice about she that. She is going to be at our legislative dinner, so that would be very good to bring mm. up with her. Maybe yeah. we can put this on the menu. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Mr. Roberts. Uh, you know we have a uh, we already have a tower about a quarter of a mile from Roosevelt. I don't know if you're aware of that, but yes. uh, mm -hmm. it just showed up. At an, I mean, there were no hearings. There was no nothing, no notice. It was private, private property. property. I know, but, I mean, it's residential area. Mm -hmm. It's right next to people's homes. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe, you know, I'm, I'm in the same belief that you. If you're going to come in and put something in a residential area, there should be a special, special exception, and people should be notified. People should have a chance to comment and be a part of the process. And, you know, I just was, happened to be over there one time and looked up, and there's mm -hmm. cell phone tower. And, I mean, it's very close to people's uh, mm -hmm. homes. And it's not just a tower. It's, a, it's a, a pretty sizable building that goes along with it, and it requires a lot of maintenance. So you, you have people, you know, driving there and, and stuff all the time. So I've got some towers over there at NASA Goddard as well. Yes. I, I personally, I personally would would make a motion that we oppose uh, cell phone towers on school property, and uh, I'm especially opposed to having one at Roosevelt because uh, not only on the the grounds of you know the exposure to the kids there, but I think it's an eyesore personally. Mm -hmm. And we already have them. I mean, there, like I said, there's one, you know, quarter mile away from there. We have the water tower that has antennas. We have them all around us. Um, it's Davis. <laughs> you make that sound so. Um, That's though there are people, there are people who constantly tell me that their cell phone, they can't hear, they can't get any reception in certain parts of Greenbelt. And to be honest, that is because we don't have the full complement. I'm not saying that we need to have it, but I think people who are complaining about lack of reception also need to know it's because there's a lack of towers. Now, what I'm opposed to the school board towers, if you want to call them that, is that basically it is a way of raising money. And that's not the way to raise money. And that is why the community church was considering it. I think GHI at some point has been approached. Right. Right. Uh, we've been approached about the forest preserve. So mm -hmm. if it's a private property, they will sometimes talk to their people around them. But if it's a private, like Glen Oaks Apartments, which is where this tel cell phone tower is, I'm sure he thought he's the owner. He just puts it up, you mm -hmm. know. So... I'm not in favor of that, but I think also for aesthetic reasons, most people do not like to live next to a tower. Whether there's a health reason or not, it mm -hmm. lowers the value of their property. So I don't, you know. And then there's the safety concerns, which were brought up uh, in one of your 
copious amounts of stuff that she gave us. My God, I ran out of ink at one point. Um, but there's some very good reasons. Um, they would have to build a road to it, and they would have to keep it open and, and keep maintained it. Hazmat materials, um, unauthorized personnel would have access to school grounds, and then if the tower would to fall in extreme weather. So there's all good points of not having it in an area where there are kids. So I don't mind writing a letter as long as we stick to what is verifiable reasons at this particular point why we oppose it. Mr. Putins. Also, and that's what I was thinking about. The other thing I want to add to this is I want to know if there's any plans, any leases, or anything that has to do with a green belt school mm -hmm. or a school that has our green belt students in it, like Magnolia and others. I'd like to include that, Mr. McLaughlin, in the letter to get that information. This letter would be to the school board. School board. I think it should go to the county. Dr. Maxwell uh, and school board. And to, school, and to the county exec, too. Because there is that a process that it's going through. Okay. Money may go to the schools, quote, as what well, I think I was surprised to find it was $1,000 a month leasing rights to it. But if you do that times 700 and whatever you want to call them schools or, or sites, that's a lot of money. It doesn't so, go yeah. to the school it's at. It, it goes into it the general does. fund. The general fund. It, uh, exactly. So to get, get a little clarity, this, this letter would uh, be requesting a, a transparent process. Mm -hmm. And up and and in opposition. Right. Well, we never uh, not supposed definitely to. opposition because we've fought this for, as you all know, even 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 individuals in private, GHI and fire department have been fighting this for a long time. They they think about it, and after a while, when they get feedback from the community or from members of council, they they drop it very quickly here. But also, we need to have the knowledge of what is really going on, because what I'm hearing and you're saying is that this, and I was, I think I even talked to you before, I was shocked to find out that it was even passed without any open discussion. Mm -hmm. I was shocked to hear that. But I would like to know where they're proposed, if there are leases signed, and where in Greenbelt. It just strikes me that, uh, you know, it really kind of comes down to the specific location. I mean, there are some places that have enough space around them where, conceivably well, it just it kind of comes down to this I really would want to know the specific location it's one thing talking about putting a tower on top of a school right where kids are playing that's ridiculous but it's another thing if they're if the school is on their school property in different places uh, where there is not a school necessarily. Well, we have it in Greenbelt. We have on Mandan Road where we have exactly, a school. Exactly, over in North College Park Correct. on the other side of the metro There's station. There's two on Mandan. But once you put them there, and if the school does go there, then you're stuck. Mr. Hurling. Of course, the other thing about this is um, the GHI uh, manager, general manager, brought to our attention that there is actually congressional legislation that the commission is um, uh, reviewing and I don't know the legislation well enough and I have referred this over to the wireless bureau to get feedback from them but apparently the legislation at least at an initial look at it would make it actually even uh, more difficult mm -hmm for jurisdictions, homeowners associations, and that kind of thing uh, to have a say. Yep. But I still do <laughs> urge that you call the number because I think that it's really important, and I think at least in part, Mayor Pro Tem Davis brought this up in terms of the science and, and also at least getting another perspective because very often what will happen is that you will get a response saying, well, points A, B, and C are on, are on point, but D through F aren't, aren't sound. So I'm um, just in a friendly fashion suggesting that so that uh, I know you've got correspondence here from the FCC and so forth, but I think it would be helpful to hear also the other side on, on this issue. Uh, one thing I, I wanted to add is... And I'm supportive. Yeah, yeah no. Just I, what is happening is uh, communities will have less ability to stop a tower location because 
industry, I mean, you could, I'm could. i not sure what's going on, but it seems like they're trying to make fast track One thing I, I wanted to add is... And I'm supportive. Yeah, it, but no, I'm just, I, what is happening is communities will have less ability to stop a tower location because... Industry, I mean, you could, I'm not sure what's going on, but it seems like they're trying to make fast track towers. Um, and the Wall Street Journal, did I talk about that last time, about how they just did an article talking about the lack of enforcement by the FCC, like that one out of ten sites had. No, but I also can cite actually examples where a commission really, real hardball, up to $120,000 of on fines. So, but anyway. yeah. Oh no, I just want to say that one out of ten sites were out of compliance and had radiation that exceeded exposure levels. And when I asked Milestone, I've actually been in many communications with Milestone. I'm glad to talk about that anytime. But I asked, when would you be checking these levels? Because the last number I saw was in 2012, being that no one else is checking what they are, and I have yet to receive that. The other thing to know about the special exception process, because I think that's the most important thing, I think every community should have that, is that the PG County Code says four visits a year by maintenance or less, you don't have to have a special exception. But I think we know from prior towers, from looking at what the maintenance needs are of a, of a tower, that you need far more than four visits a year. And I would hope if there was a tower you would have more than a year to make sure it's safe and to check all the things you have to check. And if there are four vendors, they don't go once a year to their antennas. They go in there all the time, 24-hour access, nor at least once or twice a month to check on their their antenna. So I, I think that's very important to know. And we have met with um, Executive Baker Rashur and Baker, and um, so if, as you raise that, I just want to say they're aware of the special exception issue as well, and I think that communities should at least, we, we need to say something. I know that we may not have a right if that comes in. It may be they'll say it doesn't matter what you say, but it's important that we say it because then the, the company might say, you know, I'm not going to choose that one. I'll find another one because a two-mile radius is how far those towers can go, and I just want to say I think the problem in Greenbelt is the firewalls are metal, and you really can't in your, well, if you're in a GHI, it is hard to get cell phone reception because there's all this metal in between the layers. Am I right that there's metal and we're also down? Isn't the firewall, um, it's not metal? Yeah. Firewall just but, means an extra wall separating. Oh, okay. I thought there was like an firewall. extra layers no, of no, stuff no. that, oh. yeah, but when you go outside, your cell phone works better. That's what I no. found. Not all the time. I know. <laughs> The parking lot outside the building is very difficult for me to receive. Oh. But they have a two-mile two radius, so there are I, towers available for them to put their antenna on. That's what I would say, rather than build a new one. Back. Um, I, I do think that um, we, we could send a letter to the school board and, and um, uh, the county executive and whoever else. Um, I, I think that the science is still being um, looked at and that, that that's all inconclusive. Um, so I, I would think, I would like to see the letter uh, focus on the fact that the parents uh, and citizens are concerned, that the process uh, needs to be more transparent, and then the safety concerns that I think would be worth mentioning are the ones that are listed under the Marin project that um, the Mayor Pro Tem al already listed um, about the access road and the, and the um, uh, yeah, the maintenance and uh, unauthorized personnel having access to school zones and the tower possibly being in a fall zone. That those, are the, in, in the case of severe winds and extreme weather, I think those are um, those are safety concerns that have probably have been validated, but uh, some of the others are a little bit inconclusive. So. I, I share your concern. Uh, you know, as a social worker or in health, uh, health activities, there's a lot of uh, emphasis now uh, from foundations and researchers on, on just using evidence-based approaches to, to problems. So they're very, very empirical about how they look at things. So when faced with uh, a wide variety of, of statements from various sectors of the scientific community, you know, it's difficult to, to kind of proceed based on, you know, evidence-based 
you know, when you're talking about cancer from cell phones, that's not something that you can really make a judgment on in five or ten years. These these are like long-term longitudinal longitudinal kind of things that that you um, find out about over time. So it's best to be cautious, but you know, we really have to make decisions when we can based on on hard hard scientific evidence. Ms. Davis. Uh, to be fair, um, I received, and I believe Mayor Jordan received also, a letter from um, the CTIA Wireless Association, which is a trade association for the wireless communication industry, who obviously was asking us to oppose both items uh, based on the fact that the placement of wireless towers on the grounds of the school could reduce the ability of wireless telecommunication carriers to deploy telecommunication facilities needed for public safety and to provide broadband services. And again, that's what well, some people say. We can't get reception. Um, also, and this is sort of interesting, I got a phone call from Scott Hancock, the executive director of the Maryland Municipal League, who had a phone call from somebody in Verizon who was trying to find out who he could contact on the Greenville City Council so that he could, or she, I don't know, could you know, state their opposition to this for obvious reasons. So it's interesting that this has gotten out, and obviously we had gotten some response on that. Um, I know that the National League of Cities does have policy, uh, national policy on cell towers and placement and who says what. And both Mr. Uh, Hurling and I tried to find it. And I don't have the whole 2,000-page municipal <laughs> policy, and it's not on their website that you can readily get to. So I have a feeling that they have a policy that says that the municipalities should and must have the ability to uh, state whether they approve of a cell tower or not on their, on their city land. So I have a feeling that that's what it does. Mr. Roberts. Well, sometimes uh, when you have conflicting uh, scientific views, uh, sometimes just regular old common sense is the best way to go, and common sense tells me to err on the side of safety. <coughs> uh, so sometimes that's what you have to do. But uh, I think that we should also send a letter to our federal representatives asking them to oppose legislation that will uh, prohibit uh, municipalities or homeowners associations or any other entity uh, from uh, not allowing uh, cell phone towers near them or on their property or whatever it is. You know, we, we do not need to be... We don't need to be force-fed uh, cell phone towers. And I would remind everybody that our civilization lived a long, long time and survived quite well uh, without cell phones. It's not a requirement of life. And the bubonic plague occurred then, too. So <laughs> anyway, uh, what is the, the letter of the legislation? I mean, the number of the legislation, do we know? Is there such legislation? Is well, it, there who, is. Who you yes, asked? yes. It's eight, it, I believe, in fact, I think it was the city manager who actually informed us about a month ago, like October 17th, because that's when I began trying to correspond with our wireless bureau and about the legislation. Um, but I, the fact that it's before us, again, our agency is a congressional, uh, it's not an executive uh, agency, it's by way of Congress. Um, I'm not even positive that it actually has been passed well, at it, this point. We would like to know that's even up for consideration. Well, yeah. right. So if we could, right. I think it's two separate letters we're talking about here. And if yes. there is actual legislation, I would agree with Mr. Roberts to send that letter. But until we know what the number is and where it is, I have a problem sending the letter just generally when there might not even be oh, legislation. Oh, yeah, I, I think it's H.R. 6949. Oh. H.R. 6949. It's either, either that or 4969. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, will, I will let the world know tomorrow. I will find out. Okay. It's the last thing I do at work tomorrow. So uh, what I'm hearing from council, there's a couple of courses of action. One would be to uh, draft a letter to the uh, school board. And I guess we have a motion and yeah. it was seconded yeah. to uh, draft a letter to the school board 
to uh, to ask for greater transparency. Any and, information and, and as to any least least or pending cell towers. Right, do you want to re you, you made the motion? Yeah. Could you make it again, please? Just to oppose any, any, any cell phone towers in uh, Prince George's County Schools, but you can't do that already. <coughs> but, but specifically, we want to identify any potential cell towers at any schools in the city of Greenbelt or where our Greenbelt kids go to, like Magnolia, for example, and turn, well, Turning Point is now in there. Right, so that was one part of it. The other part of it was that uh, uh, to you send that to the school board, but also to the county executive and to the uh, superintendent. And there's one other place I wanted to send it to office of it's the office of acquisitions or something on Prince George's County that deals with the act with the licensing and permitting of self towers or any kind of towers. And I, so, and your thinking in that was to actually have some impact on this process so that, you know, the, the contract with Milestone is in place, but, you know, the, there should be some way of actually, you know, knowing about... They may have a contract, but they don't have leasing uh, permits so yet for So, transparency in that, in, in the actual site selection, and a chance for public input. Is that is that what you're saying? Correct. But we also include that we opposed the cell towers in on school property for safety concerns which were listed in that one paper which That's which paper? one which safety concerns it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in the article it's it's called the article on mayor uh, no, 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 no. don't want to so support that Not the that. man project man mm -hmm. pro i can even rip it out if we want to you already there you go right there page three or five pages or six yeah. Pages. yeah page three of five i'm just trying to get project. clear on this so that the city manager will, will know mm -hmm. What to do as he drafts this correspondence, which will come back to us to to uh, mm -hmm. wordsmith or approve. Mm -hmm. Ms. Murray. Uh, Mr. Putin's just made that motion. I don't have a second. Though. Oh, second. Second. I thought it did too, but it's okay. Now you do. Hey, uh, Mr. City Manager, do you have clarity on on uh, what what's being requested? I think we do. Okay. Well, let's take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? motion carries now there was a second part of this to identify the appropriate quote federal legislation it's been proposed for the proposed in June by a congressman from Illinois it's called the amateur radio parody act of 2014 and it's it's HR 4969 so it would be cell towers that are used for amateur radio well, this and is just amateur radios then well but it's still applies to cell, cell towers. towers it's still a cell tower is this something that would impact uh emergency responders like cert teams yeah, yeah. 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 That's, 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 different. that's different i don't think we should speak to but that but it's just been proposed it has not been passed i'm not even sure if it's even out of committee okay could you yeah. do a little research on that well yeah. it's, yes <laughs> yes i'll do I think more the letter we just voted the third for, thing we yeah. just so talked fine. about Sufficient. actually bringing this up and talking with our school board representative <laughs> about it when we talk mm -hmm. about legislative matters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are the actions that have been proposed, and we just voted upon okay. that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. I wanted to ask, I also handed this out, too. This is research um, listing, so you could look at it. I know there's a lot, and the top one was what you were just talking about, saying when it comes to children, to err on the side of caution. And this was a, a law article saying that they have a higher standard for children. And, and if you actually go to that article, they list all the research and they say that it's a human rights issue because in 40 years we don't know. And I'm also a social worker and I, um, I always think prevention is the way to go. I thank you so much for really taking the time to thoughtfully um, consider this issue. And I learned a lot too about the history with Greenbelt and Cell Towers. So thank you. Thank you.